Please remain standing for the national anthem. As 
as we see every day. Economic disaster because of Biden, Pelosi, and Hobo. So many families in our community are choosing food or to keep themselves warm. That is unacceptable. We see law enforcement disrespected by our leaders every day. We have families who are not safe in their own communities. Shootings at high school football games. Parents being killed at family weekend at local colleges. And many of us in this room who do not feel safe to go to their job in New York City have to take their jewelry off, have to dress down because it's simply not safe to go to work. Unacceptable.
We will win this district. We will save this country. We have two more days to do it. Nine to five tomorrow. Any of the early voting locations. If you haven't voted yet, go out nine to five tomorrow. Or Tuesday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Yeah.
We bang pots and pans, we scream to hero. Our healthcare workers, our nurses, our doctors, our firefighters, our cops. And then when they made the very personal decision not to take a vaccine, we fired them. Well, they need their jobs back and we're back.
stay in the state that we love. Hope, ladies and gentlemen, hope. So I'll leave you with this. Almost 25 years ago, I stood in New York City, and I raised my right hand. And then I vowed to lead and protect all of the people of the city of New York. On January 1st, with all of your help, I will stand next to then Governor Zelda.
when more, more people are leaving your state than any other state. People in other states will say, well, aren't you from that state that has more people leaving there than anywhere else? It's true. This is a campaign about us being able to restore New York to glory.
say, did you hear Charles? Yeah. And the voice of the law. Yeah. Come that sort of crime. Don't let violent criminals run free. Right. And I know from the moment I got to this race, from the first visit to Orange County as a candidate, y'all were telling me about how important it was for all of you to repeal cashless bail. Understand 
how this race went from what was reported as a 24-point gap towards the end of August to Trafalgar's last poll said we were up by one. How did that happen? By the way, even, even the pollster who said it was 24 points, that pollster said that it was six a couple weeks ago. How did that happen? We focused on what voters want us to be focused on. People ask, what's the most important issue to me? Well, the most important issue to me would be the issues that are most important to the voters, because that's how this is supposed to work. This is about the people of New York wanting to take control of their government back. This is about the people of New York who understand that when engaging in the transactions of freedom with the government, it should only go one way, and that is government giving you your freedom back. It's about us understanding that public service is about serving the public, not being served by the public. And then we all know she is the two in this COVID vaccine mandate when she was pushing it. She was pushing it, she was putting people out of work, all sorts of folks treated as heroes, all of a sudden becoming zeros, and she called the New Yorkers her apostles. Show her the door! She called herself the mother of New York's 62 counties. I see a room of New Yorkers, residents, voters, constituents. I promise you that at no point will you ever hear me refer to you as my apostles. I promise you that at no point will you ever hear me refer to myself as the father of New York 62 County. for one 
of thousands of people you put out of work. And I will never support any COVID vaccine on anyone for any reason, from our kids in school, Peace, man. 
commodity that you have, your time, to be here tonight. Just like you, I love this great country. And just like you, I am deeply, deeply concerned for our future. I have never been more concerned about our future than I am now. Because in so many ways, we see how those in power are abusing their power and seeking to undermine our God-given rights that are enshrined in the Constitution every chance they get. And this, this was what was at the heart of why I had to leave the Democratic Party. Is because how can I, as a soldier and a veteran and a mem former member of Congress, who took an oath? I made a promise to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies for an enemy. And unlike too many politicians in Washington, that actually means something to me. Help me for president. Those words are seared in my heart, and it's a promise that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. It's why even as I hold no office right now, I have no position or title in society, I am doing my very best to fight for our freedoms because they are under attack by people from within this country. for Congress and running for the U.S. Senate because having this radical woke Democrat party in charge of the House, Senate, and the White House has put us in a very dangerous place as a country. But the decision that you have before you now here in a few days and who you choose to lead you as your governor matters greatly for the challenges that you're facing here all across New York, but it matters to the country. Because as we've seen over the last couple of years, who are the people who are in a position to be a check on the mandates that are coming from the federal government to the state? It's the governor. It's the governor. We've seen how different decisions that governors have made across the country have impacted people right here at home. You've seen here in New York how you had a governor who's been a rubber stamp on whatever the CDC says, whatever the Biden administration says, whatever Fauci says, protecting your individual rights and freedoms and saying no to the federal government, back off. It takes courage. It takes courage. And we need courageous leaders right now because we have people in charge of the federal government who are willing to abuse their power and leverage whatever they need to in order to force their agenda, their radical agenda on us. And one of the dirtiest tricks they play is they tell governors, if you don't do what we say, we're not going to give you money. Your money. Your money. Exactly. You should have it back. <laughs> and when you have weak people in charge, I won't even call them leaders because they're not leaders. When you have weak people in charge, who cower in fear at the federal government, who suffers, not Kathy Hochul, the people. We, the people. That's what's at stake in this election. I have been so concerned over the last two years. In some ways it's gone by quickly, but in other ways it's gone by slowly because over that short period of time we've seen a destruction of our individual rights in so many ways. And we've seen threats to our kids in schools, to education, to parental rights, to our freedom of speech, where this administration is working with big tech to silence and censor any one of us who dares to dissent. We see how they implement policies like the Ministry of Truth, or as they call it, the Disinformation Governance Board, a fancy title that basically says, hey, you know what, we in the federal government know what's best for you better than you do. We think you are too stupid to think for yourselves. And so we're going to tell you what is true and what is not. We're going to tell you what is information versus disinformation. 
We're going to tell you what you're allowed to see or hear or say. That is what they did. How is this the United States of America? This is what is so dangerous, is not only do they not believe in freedom, they hate it. They say speech is violence, and they get to say what speech is allowed. Not no more, because we will not allow them to continue this way. trust you and they respect you. 
you and only you can help influence and inform them about the right choice for New York and the right choice for this country. Don't underestimate the power that you have in your hands as you look at who you're friends with on Facebook or who's in your cell phone or maybe people you haven't talked to for a long time, people from work or church or whatever. Take that time over these next few days. I'm early going to end at the end of the day tomorrow. You got Tuesday. Take that time to really think about who you can have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with. Because every single vote counts. And if we want to have this free and bright future for generations to come, we are the only ones who can make that happen. Yes, we hold our leaders accountable. What happens on election day is really just the first round. The work, the real work begins after that, and I can tell you, me and Allison are gonna need you every step of the way to bring about the kind of change that you need to see here in New York. It's easy to feel discouraged and helpless in the face of the power of big tech, social media, big corporate media, big governments. But we need to always remember, and this is where I find hope, is in every single one of you. Their power is only as great as we allow it to be. The power really lies in our hands. And it lies in who we choose to lead and serve us, we the people in our governments. And it also lies in, in where we choose to give our attention, where we choose to give our time. But the choice is ours. Our freedom is on the line. Our future is on the line. It's going to take every single one of us to stand up and continue to fight to protect and save this country, to save your state, and to protect and defend these freedoms we hold dear. Cassius 
NFL, a policy she supported her whole adult career. She got what she wanted and she failed. And she refused to be held accountable. Dismiss this, I'll fill it up. And then she recently said she needed to see more data before she reads any changes to these laws. More data means more victims, and that's a despicable mindset for the chief law enforcement officer of this state to have. And the reality of the situation is that Mr. James is nothing more than an anti-police, pro-criminal activist pretending to be an attorney general.
told her what I have told many of you, what I continue to believe in my heart to this day, there are some things much worse than not having a job, it's called not having the nerve.
see, money, money can't buy happiness, happiness and quietly is his cash, but Chuck Schumer doesn't know yet that the money's not going to buy him a big truck. Yeah. He spent seven and a half million dollars over the last 20 some odd days, just spent another four. That's just the top of his ass. That's not the gas money, that's not the mail money, that's not the lunch money. But guess what? All it did was alert people who have watched him barter away their dreams in the name of power for himself. That the man who stole their dreams, who has left their children in schools and not teaching them how to read, but about the mechanics of sex, Thank <laughs> you. 
miracle of Christ and we need it today. We need school choice and we need it today. If your school is abusing their responsibility to your child, you should have the right to take your child and the $18,000 we have allocated for them and give your child the tool they need to Thank you to the Chancellor of the Public Committee. 